Welcome to my deep dive learning path where I show you everything about AWS Lambda extensions to more easily integrate Lambda with your favorite tools. I'm Julian Wood, a senior developer advocate for serverless at AWS. This video is part of a whole series. If you're wanting a good grounding on what Lambda extensions are, start at the first video to get up to speed. In this video, I'm going to be continuing to take an even deeper look into the Lambda lifecycle in part two of how you can build an extension using the extensions API. If you haven't seen part one, which covers the init stage, best to watch that first. This video continues with the invoke and shutdown phases. I went through the Lambda lifecycle in depth, showing the API calls and the runtime and extensions make to interact with Lambda. I had finished at the end of the init stage. The init stage completes after the runtime and each registered extension say they are ready by sending next API requests. The function has also initialized all the setup tasks are complete. Lambda is ready to progress to the invoke stage. In this phase, Lambda receives an invoke event. It sends the invoke payload to the runtime and an event to each extension registered for invokes. And then the runtime runs the function handler. Remember that slash next synchronous request from the runtime? Well, during an invoke, Lambda responds to the request. The response body contains the payload from the invocation as a JSON document with the event data from the function trigger. This payload includes hello one. The response headers contain additional data about the invocation. In the same way, Lambda responds to the slash next synchronous request from the extension. There's no ordering. Lambda responds to the request from the runtime and the extensions in parallel, and the event is sent to all registered extensions. There is a difference between the response to the runtime and the extension. The runtime receives the entire invocation event, which it sends to the function. Each extension receives metadata that describes the event content rather than the actual event payload. This includes the type of the event, in this example, invoke, and then other metadata about the invoke, such as the time that the function times out, the request ID, the on, and tracing headers. If the extension has some error doing an invoke, you can post this back to Lambda before exiting with details of the error. And as with the init error, Lambda then restarts the execution environment. Back to the happy path. If there's no error, the runtime runs the function handler. Yet we're at the super duper function part. The function runs your application code to do your fancy business processing. This may talk to external systems, calculate your unique business logic, whatever it's going to do. In this simple example showing Python or Node.js functions, which just returns hello from Lambda. Once the handler function finishes processing, it then returns its value. This is received by the runtime, and it's the runtime that sends the invocation response to Lambda. Using the runtime API to post the function response to the invocation response path. For synchronous invocations, Lambda then sends the response back to the client. Lambda responds back to the runtime that it has received the response. The runtime then calls slash next while the extensions can do more work until it's ready to call next. It's worth highlighting here one of the performance improvements with extensions compared to the preview. We've decoupled the response from the runtime and extensions calling slash next. Lambda returns a response from the function as soon as the handler is done extensions can continue to run separately. The function response doesn't have to wait for all extensions to finish processing as it did during the preview. So here's how the runtime starts the slash next cycle again, by sending a next API request to the runtime API to receive the next event. Again, this is a synchronous blocking call to Lambda, so it only receives a response when an invoke or shutdown event comes from Lambda. The extension then has time to finish processing. This can be to capture diagnostic information or send logs or metrics and traces wherever you want to send them. Remember, this time doesn't hold up the function result from the handler. When the extension is finished its processing, it sends its next API request to receive the next event. Again, a synchronous call to Lambda. It only receives a response when an invoke or shutdown event comes from Lambda. The invoke, phase fends, uh, the invoke phase ends after the runtime and all extensions signal that they are done by sending a next API request. The Lambda documentation shows the flow for invoke and how the runtime, internal and external extensions interact. 
you can specifically see how the runtime responds back to Lambda before the external extension sends its next response, the performance improvement I talked about earlier. If there are no pending invokes, Lambda freezes the execution environment. This includes the runtime and all extensions. This is how you only pay for when your functions and extensions actually run. When a new invocation comes in, the cycle all starts again. The runtime receives its response to the synchronous slash next request to Lambda. Here we can see the payload includes hello2 as this is a separate invocation. And in parallel, Lambda responds to the extension that this is another invoke again with the metadata that describes the event. The runtime then runs the function again. This is your application code, the code inside the handler to do your business processing. Once the handler finishes processing, in the, it then returns its value which is received by the runtime again. And then the runtime uses the runtime API to post this function response back to Lambda. Then the runtime is finished sending the function result. It requests the next event while the extension can carry on doing some more work. The extension continues sending out its telemetry data about this invoke or whatever it needs to do. When it's finished, it sends its next API request to receive the next event and another function invoke phase is complete. Here's a link to the documentation again to see the flows. And further invokes may come in for this Lambda function and the process is gonna repeat. Just to explain duration. When a Lambda function invokes, its overall function duration is the total amount of time that your function code spends processing an event. To know the performance impact of extensions on the invoke phase, Lambda outputs the post runtime execution duration metric. This measures the time spent between the runtime next API request and the last extensions next API request. That's the extra time extensions take over and above the runtime. To measure the increase in memory used, you can use the max memory use setting and run different versions of functions side by side to understand the impact of a specific extension. If there are no pending invokes, Lambda freezes the execution environment. This includes the runtime and all extensions. The shutdown phase is triggered if the Lambda function does not receive any invocations for a period of time or Lambda needs to refresh the environment. Lambda sends the runtime a shutdown event rather than an invoke request in response to the previous next API call. If there are only internal extensions, the runtime has 500 milliseconds to gracefully shut down or it's terminated. At the same time, Lambda sends a shutdown event to all registered external extensions in response to the previous extensions API next request. You can see the response includes that it is a shutdown in this case, not an invoke. Extensions can then use this time for any final cleanup tasks they need to do. This could be to send out any remaining logs or telemetry data or notify some other system or close connections to whatever they may be talking to. The entire shutdown phase is capped at two seconds if there are external extensions. If any external extensions haven't shut down by then, then they are terminated. And again, you can see the shutdown phase flow diagram in the documentation. And then Lambda goes ahead and removes the whole execution environment. This cleans up everything to do with the sequence of function invocations. If any further invocations come in that are not rooted to other execution environments, the whole cycle starts again with the init phase. Having a look at Lambda billing now, extensions shared the same billing model as Lambda. For invokes, you pay for the number of requests served and the combined compute time in one millisecond increments. This is the total time that the function and all extensions run. For shutdown, there's no request, you just pay for the build duration. This is a great quick demo to get started, but can teach you loads about Lambda and about extensions. It's a custom runtime extension demo on the GitHub repository. What this does is it, it's all deployed via AWS SAM and it's using a custom runtime using AL2 and it has a custom runtime layer and an extensions layer. And it's basically built by using um, Bash and it's got the runtime, which echoes a whole bunch of information to show exactly what the runtime is doing. Um, uh, the function file echoes exactly what the function is doing and the extension files also echo exactly what the extensions are doing. And what I can, do here from even from within VS code, I can execute this function using any invocation and that is going to uh, invoke my function. 
What I can then do is I can go into um, CloudWatch logs, again from VS Code or from the AWS Management Console, and I can see in glorious detail everything that's going on that's being logged. So I can see here I've got information from the runtime that's logging, from the function that's logging, from the extensions that's logging. You see the cold starts, you see the warm starts, you see the values that are being passed around. And this is a really good way to learn all about Lambda and Lambda extensions and follow the log lines. Here's a direct link to the demo. It's a really great way to learn how Lambda works under the hood, logging every step to see the runtime extensions and functions interact. Lastly, some tips are useful when building your own extensions. It's best to build as a self-contained executable binary. This means you can run the same extension across multiple function in runtimes. Let your extensions be configured in the same way as Lambda environment variables. <clears throat> this could be including API key information, timeout settings, anything your extensions need as a configuration item. Be efficient with your timing. Register quickly so the runtime can carry on its initialization. If your runtime is sending out telemetry data that isn't time critical, you can batch costly calls out. And consider the time your extensions take to run and the package size limit, which is shared with function code. To review what we've been through, this was part two of the super deep dive into how you to use the runtime and extensions APIs to build your own extensions, or even just to understand exactly how Lambda works under the hood. I went through the Lambda lifecycle in detail, showing the changes to init, invoke, and shutdown, and how extensions can plug into Lambda to give you more information about your invokes. I showed the API calls and how the runtime, extensions, and functions interact. I went through what billing looks like, and then showed the demo you can easily deploy yourself to see all the stages, and look through the logs to understand how it all fits together. And I finished with some tips on things to think about when building extensions. In the next video, I'm going to be taking a look at how you can include your extensions as functions deployed as container images, which don't use Lambda layers. As usual, for plenty more information, head over to serverlessland.com with lots of resources, blogs, videos, workshops, and learning paths. Everything about serverless on AWS. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn about Lambda extensions, and hopefully you can put what you've seen into action. My name is Julian Wood, and you can find me on Twitter at Julian underscore Wood.